I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. This is my day, and nothing out here is going to stop me. And you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change. Unbelievable start to this fight. Give it to him. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. This is Jeremy Sports Network coming to you live. How is everybody doing on today? It's Monday, right? It's what we put in that hard work. Waking up after a long, long weekend. And we had a lot to take place this weekend. Not only in, in boxing. We saw Mike Perez go down and lose but also in other sports football in particular you know to my football fans that's out there shout out to my georgia bulldogs they put on a hell of a performance in in uh in this past week so everybody didn't you know give them a chance at all to win but they showed up did exactly what they supposed to do. Shout out to them. And uh, it's not looking too good, you know, as far as my Patriots is concerned. But, you know, that's that's a topic for another day. But today, you know, we're talking Lomachenko versus Rigandau. You know, this is a full preview where we talk about these fighters. We talk about their records and what it is they've done so far. As far as boxing is concerned, who will be the better opponent? And this stands to be perhaps one of the best fights of the year. And the fact that we're getting that with Lomachenko versus Rigandau, man, is that not another hand clap for boxing? I mean, you have to give it up to him, right? Look at what are we getting right now in 2017 I can't say it none other way but when we talk about this fight in particular I mean there's a lot that we can discuss and we could talk about we could talk about you know the rantings of Lomachenko being pound for pound the best fighter right now in boxing and we can also talk about Rigandau in his last performance, you know, was it after the bell or was it before the bell? You know, that knockout performance that he that he had in his last fight that raised a whole lot of controversy. But we're going to get to that. Also, what we have coming up today is a special guest straight out of Mississippi, the state of Mississippi. And um, his name is Charles Harris. He has a wonderful story. Um. And this kid, he's a hard worker. He's a hard worker. He is really trying his best to put himself in position to where he is not only successful inside the ring, but outside of the ring as well. And when you have guys who are putting in the work to the magnitude of what it is that he's doing, I have to give shots out to him, man. I, and I, I believe... You know, Charles Harris has the potential to become a future world champion. And also, I see Charles Harris doing big things um, outside of boxing because of what it is he's doing now. And we're going to talk about that coming up later on in the show. So stay tuned for that. He will be on the line. But talking Lomachenko, right? This guy got to be considered in most people eyes most people um uh, pound for pound <laughs> and it's funny to me how you can consider a guy pound for pound with only 10 fights and the 10 fights that he's had right 
And when you talk about the 10 fights that Lomachenko has had up until this point, we're, we're going to check that out, you know. And up until this point, Lomachenko has faced Miguel Mariaga in his last fight, where Miguel Mariaga put hands on him. He put paws on Lomachenko because we saw Lomachenko face after the fight. And when we saw Miguel Mariaga face after the fight, you know, it was like, well, we did see the skill set be a little bit more uh, gifted towards Lomachenko. But Mariaga was, was very slick in doing what it was he was doing to land certain shots on Lomachenko that, you know, bruised his face pretty badly to me in my eyes. Now, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, right? But my opinion, as far as what it is I saw in that fight, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. But then if you continue down, you know, as far as Lomachenko, uh, boxing record is concerned, Miguel Mariaga, like we said in his last fight, Jason Sosa, uh, Nicholas Walters, which he made Nicholas Walters quit. Although, we have to take this in consideration, and I talked about this before. Nicholas Walters, to me, him coming off of that layoff and then hopping into the ring with a guy like Lomachenko, who is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, who has a hell of an amateur background. I mean, how can you do that to yourself after you had a layoff the way you did in Nicholas Walters trying to come back like that, although you was the champion. But, you know, those are questions that we have to ask when you do something like that. You know, I think that was bad on Nicholas Walters' management, you know, taking on a fight like that with Lomachenko when, you know, Lomachenko was kind of on an uprise as far as his career is concerned. Roman Martinez after that. And any other big time name you can't name outside of Gary Russell Jr. And Lomachenko's only loss with Orlando Salido, which he has yet to try to make a revenge on after losing to, to, to Salido. But I don't even care about the Orlando Salido fight, right? Because to me, in my eyes, he made up for that in taking on Rigondeaux, right? It was like, if, okay, if we don't get Rigondeaux, we have to get Salido. You have to avenge that loss if you're Lomachenko, especially if they're considering you to be pound for pound, Right? But in my eyes, I know damn well he's not pound for pound. But that's just me. You know? How can you say Lomachenko was better than Terrence Crawford and what Terrence Crawford has done at, at 135? Or, I mean, at 140. How can you say that? Well, he dominated 135 as well. But 140. How can you say that about Terrence Crawford? Or Andre Ward, who just retired, who defeated... Uh, Sergey Kovalev twice no matter how he did it no matter what it is that you say about uh, Andre Ward he still did it but I'm trying to figure out how can you put Loma better than a lot of the fighters Keith Thurman is Lomachenko better than Keith Thurman hell no Keith Thurman took on a lot more bigger names than what Lomachenko has so far. Tougher opponents than Lomachenko. How can we say he's pound for pound? And damn it, I can't even put the man, you know, somewhat past Danny Garcia, who's been champion, who was world champion for six years straight. Every fight he's been in as a world champion, he was the underdog. It's things like that that 
that uh, media members, certain media members, like to put out there. Now, those of you who, who really like Lomachenko and his skill set, I have no problem with Lomachenko and his fight game. But I have a problem when we start talking about things like, oh, he is pound for pound the best fighter that's out there. That's where I have a problem. And, and I mean, you know, it's trolling, if you ask me. It's trolling. But I guess this is what we have in the sport of boxing right now, right? We got a lot of trollers, people who will, mm, I would say, talk trash as far as putting their best fighter up there in the ranks and saying that their fighter is the best. Because if you think about it, when you have guys like Teddy Atlas who does things like that, it, it's a problem. To me, it's a problem. I mean, come on. How can you throw that guy as number one pound for pound? And they really believe that. But, you know, it's the same thing for when we when we have when we have things like uh how could I say it? When we have things like Teddy Atlas saying saying that about Lomachenko, or when we have um guys saying Triple G lost to Canelo when we all sat here and saw Canelo not fight back for a long period of time throughout that fight, you know, him sitting back being a counter puncher. You know, it'd be things like that, like the like the way certain people score fights. It's just, it's so much that's in boxing that I'm really trying to like figure out, you know what I mean? And that's crazy to me. But, you know, we're getting ready to get Charles Harris on the line. And <laughs> I'm looking forward to talking to this young man. We're going to get back to talking about Lomo versus Rigo. But in talking to uh, to Charles, I want to I want to I want to I want to make a lot of fighters be on notice so that they can understand what it is that he is doing and I think they could take from his blueprint him being a young fighter and adapt it to their game. And I'm not talking about boxing. I'm talking about outside of the ring. What are you doing as far as your community is concerned? What are you doing as far as helping others? Is concerned. Not just about your boxing. But about. What it is you do. Outside of the ring. That to me is very. Very important. It's vital. Reason why I say it's vital. Is because. After your career is over. What do you want people to remember you as. That's the thing. What do you want people to remember you as? You may not have the best boxing career, right? But if you were a good people's person, if you're a good people's person, then you will win. You will win every time. But, you know, I'm trying to understand something. Because when you're young, whether it's amateur or whether you're a professional, what is it that stands out when you look at other, other fighters? Is it the lifestyle that they live? You know, because with young fighters, a lot of people think about you know, when they see Floyd Mayweather, they see the flashy lifestyle, right? They see Floyd, 
you know, with the jewelry, with the cars, with everything. And I have no problem with that. But when we talk about uh, you sustaining, you know, a career outside of that, it's a reason how Floyd was able to get to that point. Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. And this is Charles Harris calling in. Give us one second. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live with Charles Harris. Charles, how you doing, champ? I'm doing great, my guy. So what's been going on with you? A lot of grinding, a lot of spending, a lot of work. Right, so I know you've been working hard, uh, definitely, not only in boxing, but we're going to talk a little bit about your boxing career. And also, we're going to talk about what it is that you do outside of the ring as well. So, starting with your boxing career, uh, what got you started in boxing? Well, before I, before I answer your question, before I answer that question, I would like to uh, just give a give a, uh, a heaven to the heavenly Father who ever for over my life, and um, give you honor for letting me be on your show today, man. Thank you for inviting me on your show today. Oh, no problem, champ. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, interview you. So, uh, what got you started in boxing? Well, um, who dreamed it really was at first, to be honest with you, Mr. Jim, it was my baby brother dream. His name is Walter Harris. He started off with the sport of boxing, and um, he couldn't do it no more because he had he got hit pretty hard and he had head trauma. And stuff like that. And um, so one day, almost, so I, I said to myself, but not let the dream die, big brother might as well just take it up. And ever since then, I've been loving the sport of boxing. Boxing has grown into me. I love it. Stuff like that. Wow. So, man, I'm sorry to hear about that. But you've been doing a wonderful job. I mean, you're undefeated. What are you, uh, seven and zero right now? Eight and zero. Eight and zero. And you're fighting in what division right now? Are you fighting in? Welterweight. The welterweight division, which is to me, it's a it's a stacked division. How do you think about that division as a whole right now in the welterweight division? There's a lot of there's a lot of people inside that welterweight division that really. Really owns it. Like this one, as as you can look at it, uh, Keith Palmer, you oh, know, yeah. uh, Danny Garcia, people like long. It's a long list of people in that division that really just own that division. Right. So, who would you model your 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 fight game after? That's maybe up there in the in the pros right now. Who do you model your fight game after, whether it's a Floyd Mayweather, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, any one of those guys? No, it's the Bronx Bomber from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, so you from, oh, okay, well, well, you know, we we was talking about Deontay Wilder a little bit earlier. So what is it that you think about the Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz incidents as far as PEDs in the sport of boxing is concerned? I mean, I feel like this. I feel like Deontay Wilder is getting very looked over in the sport of boxing because he's in the South. He's still in the South. He's in the South. If you look at his 30, well, his 40 victories, all of them consider his five of them only a not knockout. The rest of them are complete knockout, complete domination, straight knockout. Any bad, any powerful wicked. 
And another reason why I love him because, like, he's still in the South. He's still in his hometown. Like, Tuscaloosa loved Deontay Wilder. And, like, when I go over there and I see, like, how his, how his, how his hometown reacts to him when they see him, it makes me feel like my hometown reacts like that to me when they see me. And it makes me feel like, why should I leave? Why should I go up north? I should just stay where I'm at and go and crawl and crawl from here, from the south. Right. So, in talking about your fans in general, um, or your supporters in general, you do a great job not only in the ring but outside of the ring, and you've been making moves since I've since I've met you. You've been you know, involved in the community, not only in the community, but you've been uh, involved as far as um, helping young children, speaking to young kids. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, the journey of that was like I started uh, stopping the violence and stopping the bullying. It started this weekend in Tupelo, at the Tupelo Skate Zone. And um, it's all about just like, just going to talk to the kids, any age. Well, it started like two weeks ago in Houston, Mississippi. Um, I was in Houston. I got invited to Houston to speak to some kids all about those things like bullying and violence and safety and stuff like safety and with, with the police and with the police officers in Houston, Mississippi. And um, things like that, it's, it's, it's deeper than that, you know, like because as a child, I was bullied, you know, and it made me as the person that I am today. Right, a, a, a strong fighter. So when you talk about you being bullied um, at that young age and you talking to the, to the young kids and you're starting to stop the bullying um, as far as this weekend is concerned, um, how has it been beneficial to... The, the parents, as you talking to the young kids right now, I know the parents have to back you a lot because of what it is that you're doing um, as far as helping their children out because we never know what child could be experiencing that. So how are the parents gravitating to what it is you're starting? I mean, they, they love it. I mean, because, like, you know, when a child, there's so many ways you can get bullied. You know, you can get cyber bully, you can get physical bully, you can get bully because you ain't you ain't you ain't got who the next person got. That's what type of bully I went through. I went through because my family, my mom wasn't able to, wasn't able to um, buy the Jays, the Forces, the Apple Force Ones, the Nikes, the Polo stuff like that. That's what type of bullying I was I was dealing with, and sometimes I was dealing with the the physical bully too because I wasn't the type of person to this day that believes in violence. I still don't believe in violence because there's plenty of ways you can you can solve your problem without hitting someone. Wow, man, that is good, and and that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, in the midst of the show was how well you're doing outside of the ring and what and the position you're putting yourself in because not only are you speaking to young kids but you're doing other things as well you have other dreams um as well you you've been involved as far as a uh, commercial is concerned talk about that a little bit well my commercials like one of my commercials i did for jordan bottle shop in Columbus, mississippi They've been playing on national TV, Channel 27, for Fox back this way in Mississippi. And um, I have did some, some big commercials for Carl, I saw Carl Hogan, uh, Carl Hogan Nissan, and uh, um, Queen River. Some some more names like uh, the liquor store, Cabana Liquor Store. Signing some bottles. Like I went to West Point today and did another commercial up there in West Point today for a little stove. And I also today at five o'clock I will be mean will be mean doing some more commercials after at five and stuff like that. And at five five thirty I will be mean Mississippi State head coach Dan Mullen about 
the game they got coming up with, with Alabama. We're gonna roll. We're gonna be. We're gonna beat roll tight this year. For all the Mississippi State fans out there, just just hold your horses. Do not give up on the Bulldogs because the Bulldogs are gonna overcome these these last two losses they have got. Now, now. <laughs> You know I'm a Georgia boy, and, and we whooped up on y'all pretty good <laughs> last, what it was about, last week. We whooped up on y'all pretty good, and uh, y'all took another defeat this weekend. So you you think y'all rally for Alabama? Oh, yeah. I mean, anything possible in the SEC, man. The SEC, anybody, any, any team, any day of the week, you lose a game. Anybody can lose a game. Like Georgia. Like Georgia, they just don't know. They got... I don't know who they playing next. If we play in, in the SEC, any team in the SEC is guaranteed to lose a game in that conference. Anybody, if, in the, if it's the South or the North SEC, you know, and the cover that we play in with Alabama, Alabama been the top dog for the past seven years, well, probably the past 13 years in our, in our division. If Absolutely. You Alabama, if you beat Alabama, you got a good chance to win a national championship. That's anybody in the college football. Well, well, there you have it, Mississippi State fans. Dan Mullen, y'all got the champ Charles Harris backing you all on a victory against Alabama this year. And um, I know you really look forward to uh, speaking with Dan Mullen, which is going to be great. And um, I think you're doing an awesome job so far as your career is concerned, not only in boxing but what you're doing outside of the ring and um to me that's just stand up you know um you're putting yourself in position to be very successful and accomplish a lot of your dreams um outside of the ring because there's also one big dream that you look to have as well and that's starring in a movie right oh yeah i have a, a movie coming up you guys it's about my life it's the life of charles harris it's the struggles what I went through as a child. Um, it's the ups and downs as losing my father at the age of seven. You know, being mentally, physically bullied, and being raped as a child. So all that gonna be played in the movie. Everything I've been through as a child. Everything my mom went through raising six boys by herself with food stamps, with government assistance. Everything. You know, all that's going to be played in the movie. And I hope, I hope everybody get a chance to see it. And I know y'all going to love it because everything we're going to put in this movie is going to be the truth. It's about my life, what I went through as a child and what I'm going through right now as a grown man. Wow, Charles, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, I've been telling people you have a powerful story. And also what we're going to do, those of you who are tuning in, um, there was a, a really good blog that was written on Charles Harris's life that we're going to drop in the description. So you all will be able to read that. Um, and it talks a little bit about his life, him losing his father, um, as well as some of the struggles and, and some of the things that, that uh, Charles like so far as boxing is concerned, which is really good. So we will have that link in the description for everybody to tune into, but Charles, uh, there's another question I want to talk to you about as far as boxing is concerned. Um, talk about uh, the next time we will be able to see you in the ring. Well, my, my next fight was supposed to be here at home on 31st of October, but it got canceled because the guy got caught with steroids in his system. And we take him, we're going to take him to court for that because it's the second time he had did that incident. So, I mean, like, we trying to get money out for him. We trying to get money out dis discussing him. We trying to get him suspended for the next two years and get his license stripped for a minute and um, make sure he's gonna be able to go in no gym and work out because because if you say you was a great boxer, you don't need to use steroids to to train to work out to beat anybody. Boxing is a mind thing. It's a mind control, and it's like if you say you good, you say you this, you say you that. If you can't go into the ring without using illegal drugs, boxing is not for you because it's a it's a it's a fun sport and it's also a dangerous sport. You also if using steroids, you can also hurt the person real bad that you are up against fighting in the ring with using those type of drugs. 
Wow, man, that that is so that is that is crazy because with Deontay Wilder being your favorite fighter and what it is he's dealing with as far as Luis Ortiz is concerned, you turn around and have to deal with the same thing with your fighter um, that you were supposed to have on October 31st. And the fact that this guy has been caught with steroids as well, man, Boston is starting to need to start, you know, cleaning it up a little bit. And I think Vada testing, what it, what do you think about the Vada testing? I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but the way I see it, if you, it's like this with, like the way basketball, college football, pro football, college basketball, and pro football play. If you get caught three times with those things in your system, you shouldn't even be able to box no more. You shouldn't even be, you should, your license should be stripped from you. Everything that you have accomplished, it should be stripped away from you. They should, like, probably embarrass you type of things like that when you using those type of things because like if you gotta use those type of drugs to get to the top of the mountain what is you doing it for because you have people that's in the gym 24 7 7 days training hard to accomplish those things and if you gotta use those drugs ain't, ain't no way you that do as you say you Right. You're you're absolutely right. And that's that's as far as any sport is concerned, whether it's baseball, NFL, NBA, boxing, soccer, whatever. Whatever. If you gotta use if you gotta use the SL drugs, you you are not good as you say you are. <clears throat> and like, okay, like um the article you were speaking on about with that, my um top five Favorite fighters of all time, if you don't mind me listening. Oh, go right ahead. Number one is gonna be myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, the number one, the number one on my list is me. Number number one of all time is Muhammad Ali. Number two, I don't have nothing against Floyd Money Mayweather, but as one of the greatest fighters, he's not the greatest. He's the best defensive fighter of all time in my books. And he's the first undefeated black African American we have had in the sport of boxing in history, you know. And my my next favorite fighter is Mike Tyson, Holyfield, Lenny Lewis, Deontay Wilder, Lenny, uh, Deontay Wilder, Keith Thomas. And Garcia, and then Money Mayweather. Oh, so Floyd is at the bottom. He's number five. The reason I put him at number, the reason I put him that, the reason I put him that low, is because those guys that I named, those are heavy hitters. Those fighters are they going in for? They 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 not going in to run the whole fight, and. For people to say Floyd is the greatest fighter of all time, that's totally disrespectful. That's totally disrespecting Mike Tyson. That's totally disrespecting the Hall of Famer, the legendary, rest in peace for Muhammad Ali. That disrespecting the Muhammad Ali family because it, it would never be a greater fighter than Muhammad Ali. No matter who you, who's undefeated, no matter what records you break, it would never be another. It would never be another Muhammad Ali in the sport of boxing because he's the greatest fighter of all time. And Floyd Mayweather May well is a great fighter, but he's not the greatest fighter of all time. He's one of the greatest, but he's not the greatest. The greatest, the one that rests in peace, Muhammad Ali. Well, there you go. Rest in peace to Muhammad Ali for not only being really good inside the ring, but also being a great humanitarian as well. And, uh, and Charles, man, I want you to give everybody your social media so that they'll be able to follow you on social media. Well, my Facebook name is Charles Harris. My um, Instagram name is Charles Harris, the champ. Twitter name, Mississippi champ. MySpace, Mississippi champ. And Google, Charles Harris, the champ. And that's it. And you also can, um, if you 
Uh, if anybody on here that from with him from Mississippi, you also can follow. You also can start watching my my commercial for Jordan Bottle stuff that is on national TV, channel 27 for Fox. It'll be playing on now every once in a while. And it's a very good commercial. We'll have you laughing. Have <laughs> cut so fresh like you want to knock your barber out. You know, have you, if you've seen it, if you see it on TV, take a picture of it, post it on your page, because it's funny. A lot of people will, you will enjoy the commercial idea with Jordan Barbershop. Like, it make you laugh. <laughs> and, the that, and the thing that I'm doing with my life, I'm actually really not doing it for myself. It's for my mom, my brothers, and my dad, and my auntie. And I'm doing it for Mississippi too because we never had a Mississippi champ come back this week. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since Mississippi ever had a champion. And I know one of these days, I'm going to be on that national televised big card. That's what I'm waiting for. And I'm dreaming. I know it's coming each and every day. It's coming closer each and every day. Well, there you go, champ. Continue to work hard. Continue to strive for your goals. And uh, you're welcome here on Jeremy Sports Network anytime, man. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you real soon. Thank you, Mr. Jim, for the interview, man. No problem, champ. You take it easy, and uh, we'll hear from you real soon, champ. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Charles Harris on the line. And like I said, he's a really good guy, man. And he has a wonderful story. You know, the fact this guy lost his father at an early age of seven, you know, a lot of people can't attest to that. A lot of people have their fathers in their lives. A lot of people in boxing have their fathers in their corners as their trainers, as their managers, as everything for them. And and for Charles to not have that in his life, I know he is together with some good people because of what he's doing so far. And I know it's somebody who has taken him under their wing, who is leading him in the right direction. And that's And that's all that matters at the end of the day. You know, and he has a wonderful story. Like I said, we look forward to seeing um, the documentary of his life come out. Um, and not only that, we look forward to seeing him doing uh, more big things inside his community as well. And with a guy like that, man, that that is stand up. That is stand up. That is that is what I love to see from our young fighters and fighters who have tuned in to this, whether you're amateur, pro inspiring to be a fighter or whatever the case may be take away from the blueprint a little bit get involved in the community because not only you being involved in community help you out in the long run but it helps you have supporters and you build a supporting cast behind what it is you're doing especially in the sport of boxing so we was able to talk about a lot with charles and um He's a really good guy, man. Make sure y'all follow him on social media um, as he continues on uh, throughout his pro career. He's 8-0, looking to become 9-0, and he fights in the welterweight division. So I see him coming over to Georgia real soon to having some big fights here in Atlanta maybe. You know, we'll be able to see if some things could get worked out so he'll be able to showcase his talent here in the state of Georgia. Now, Back to Lomo Rigo. We're going to talk about a, a little bit about uh, Rigandau. You know, early in the first part of the show, we talked we talked about Lomachenko. We talked about his fights that he's had. He really didn't have any big time fights um, outside of Gary Russell Jr. Um, and what else? Orlando Salido, the fight that he took the L in, and then the Miguel Mariaga fight. I believe that fight was sold out on ESPN. The Jason Sosa fight was pretty good. But those are not the names of opponents, you know, for Loma to be ranked pound for pound over everybody. You know what I'm saying? 
Those are not the names. Now, when we talk about uh, Rigandau, now Rigandau, a lot of people have different feelings towards Rigandau. You know, you have some people who say Rigandau is a troll. Rigandau uh, screams that he wants fights, then he back out of fights. Um, you have some people say that Rigandau, on the other side, you have some people say that Rigandau's skill set is the reason why a lot of fighters duck him or is the reason why he don't have a lot of fights because of how boring he makes fights seem because his skill set is on a whole nother level as far as other boxers are concerned, right? But when you talk about some of the opponents that we had, and, and, and Rigandau, 17 and 0, hasn't lost the fight as a professional. His last fight was against uh, Moses Flores, where he won that fight by knockout, but it was a no contest, and he won a title. I believe, well, since it was a no contest, I think they took the title away from him, and that was the WBA uh, Super World Bantamweight title, and it was the IBO um, championship as well that he did not win um, because it was considered a no contest with Moses Flores, who was 25-0. and 0. And he dropped Moses Flores. And to me, Rigandau in that fight was looking like, you know, once again, his skill set was, was separating from Moses Flores. Flores was not able to land those shots on Rigandau like Moses Flores was able to do as far as his past fights is concerned. And Rigandau was able to put on a really good performance against Moses Flores until the knockdown which was very controversial, but, you know, it was considered a no contest. But then again, moving away from the Moses Flores fight, every other fight that he had after that, I mean, he, he made every fighter look easy. Made easy work of everybody who he's fought. But the fact that we're getting these two fighters right now, and a lot of people say, well, it could be the age of Rigandau. Rigandau may be slowing down because he's he's 36 years old, I believe. So a lot of people saying that he's slowing down. But do I think that's going to happen? Absolutely not. I don't think him being 36 is, is slowing him down. Because when you watch him train, he looks very well. He's always in condition, in good condition. And he does a great job as far as training is concerned. And I believe Rigandau is going to make... This is a this a really good fight with Lomachenko. And what's going to separate these fighters is what I believe is the second half of the fight. The first half, they're going to be figuring each other out, but that second half is going to determine a whole lot with Loma Rigo. And I'm really looking forward to that. Those of you who are just now tuning in, I want to get your thoughts on this fight between Lomachenko versus... Uh, Rigandau, which is coming up, drop it in the comment sections and tell me who do you think is going to win this fight? Do you believe it's going to be Lomachenko? Do you think Lomachenko is, is considered being the best right now in the sport of boxing, pound for pound, as Teddy Atlas may put him up there? I mean, he's not pound for pound on my list. I don't even think I have him in the top five. But for those of you who are tuning in, if you believe Lomachenko should be in the top or at the top, as far as pound for pound is concerned, drop it in the comments and let me know. And also drop in the comments who you would think, who do you think is going to win this fight? Now that remains to be seen when it comes to these two guys. December 9th is going to be a hell of a night. And not only with these two guys, but as far as boxing is concerned, as far as the year is concerned, the month of October is going to be stacked. And I'm looking forward to the month of October. Shout out to John Wilson. He responded and he said, I think Rigandau's skill and movement is at, in different angles is going to give Lomachenko problems. And you know what, John, I have to agree with you on that because and also I agree with you with what, what your next comment was Terrence Crawford pound for pound number one yes he is in my eyes and in my books Terrence Crawford is pound for pound number one not Lomachenko 
they could get out of here and go to hell with that one. But when you talk about the skill set and the angles, the first guy who we was able, we was really able to see this from was Rigandau. It wasn't Lomachenko. We have to get that right. And then on top of that, Rigandau knows something that Lomachenko does not know. And what he, and what Rigandau knows is the fact that those angles and the movement we only seen half of what Rigandau can do. We've seen the max and the magnitude of what it is that Lomachenko can do in my eyes. And and everything it is that Lomachenko does, he still get touched. He still get touched, right? We saw Miguel Mariaga was able to get hands on him. With Rigandau, yes, he was dropped in some fights, but we're talking about this fight in particular. I believe, just like John believes, that the angles in the movement from Rigandau is going to cause Loma a lot of problems. And when we talk about boxing, like you said, uh, John said 2017 is the best year for boxing. It absolutely is. I mean, I said this, what, two shows ago. Since the beginning of the year, the beginning of the year, Every fight we've had has been what the fans have asked for. We're getting that. And we were this close to getting Deontay Wilder to put himself in a position to where he had no choice but to fight a top-level fighter, right? Now, November 4th isn't over with yet. Hopefully, we may see him in the ring against a top opponent. But damn sure... We was close to seeing Deontay Wilder in the ring with a uh, a guy of good quality, right? Because we've seen every good fighter this year fight a guy of good quality. We've seen Keith Thurman take on Danny Garcia, Sean Porter. We was able to see Adrian Brona, Mikey Garcia. We would have thought, we, we would have never seen that fight, right? We would we would never saw that. In the middleweight division, I mean, come on. We're getting Erickson Lubin taking on Charlo? Come on. Are you serious? Look at all these fights that we're getting. Triple G Canelo. Who would have thought we was going to get that this year? Maybe next year we would have thought we was going to get that. But this year we was able to get that fight. Everything that's taken place so far as, as far as this year is concerned in boxing, we've been getting. And it's been good. Good action. And this is why boxing is thriving. This is why boxing is better than MMA. This is why I'm, listen to what I'm telling you guys. Listen to what I'm telling you guys. This is why boxing is better than MMA. There has yet to be an MMA event to where they made more money at the gate than boxing. Boxing will always be on top. And nothing against MMA fighters, but I'm just saying, look at it, look at how well the fight's been going on this year. Every fight. Kell Brook, Errol Spence, you know what I'm saying? It just continues. It don't get no better than that. But like I said, this is just a preview for Lomo Rigo. We will be doing film study sessions on these fighters. Tune in uh, later on tonight. We will be coming back, and we're going to be talking um, Erickson Lubin taking on Charlo. Charlo, you know, still sparring with Errol Spence as he prepares for Erickson Lubin. But Erickson Lubin... I don't want everybody to start sleeping on this guy. I was able to see Eric Lubin fight live in his last fight when he fought on the uh, Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman undercard. And the knockout win that Eric Lubin had in that fight was, was amazing back in March. And so he looks to repeat that or maybe go to distance with Charlo, who we know these guys, both of them, pack power 
and they are very good. And I'm really looking forward to that fight come October 14th. So we're going to talk a little bit about Erickson Lubin. We're going to do a film study session on Erickson Lubin on this show. And we're going to go from there later on tonight. So this is Jeremy Sports Network. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. It helps with the visibility of the show. And then if you have any hate, make sure you drop it in the comment section. You know, we accept everything here at Jeremy Sports Network. So shout out to Charles Harris. Thank him for coming on the show. And also, uh, shout out to everybody who paid, you know, attention to what it is that we were talking about. This is Jeremy Sports Network coming to you live. I am signing out. We will holler at you guys later on. Peace.